All right, everybody. I am back. We are about a week from the publishing of the last video. Um, I haven't done any update videos since, just because the boat's been a total mess. I've worked on a few hours here, a few hours there, every couple of days, every day or so. Um, and I really just didn't want to show what kind of mess that this thing generates. It had wiring everywhere, tools, uh, just garbage, the whole nine yards. Plus, I don't really plan these videos and stuff out, and I don't really think about them ahead. I kind of wing them. You can probably tell by the high quality of production. But, so here's the update. From the last video, I got the forward deck in, totally. Uh, my recessed foot pedal tray is in, and the trolling motor is all wired up. It is missing the propeller off the trolling motor right now, just because it broke while in storage. So i got to go get a new one. Uh, there's a forward battery. Uh, that battery's primary job is the trolling motor. The console is in. All the switch panel and switches are all wired up. My GPS and fish finder's on. The engine remote is all in. Um, going towards the back here. Yeah, you have the rear battery. Also, the bilge pump and bait well pump are down underneath. You can see them down there. Um, and the motor's wired back up. It's, it is ready to start, it is ready to run. I can actually probably put it on the water right now if I wanted to. Uh, I don't have a seat to sit on while I do it though. So let's discuss the wiring. Um, people seem to get confused on uh, boat wiring, but it's really not that complicated if you look at it as like a circulatory system on a body, which probably confuses people even more. Um, so on this boat and every boat that I've done recently, I use a onboard charger. So this is a, is a Pro Mariner Pro Sport. It's a dual bank, so it charges both batteries. Um, I have a permanently mounted plug here. It's a shoreline outlet. So I just plug an extension cord into it. instantly charges it up. I don't have to go chasing around trying to find that cord. Um, if you do something like that, make sure it's something easy to reach from the ground. I did it on the pontoon where it was on the side. You have no idea how convenient it is to be able to plug your shoreline in from the ground without having to jump in the boat. So it runs a positive and negative to each battery. Um, there's one here, and then it runs all the way through the front. Um, this will be the primary starting battery. It also uh, controls most of the accessories on the boat. Um, well, I kind of like both batteries can actually do that. Except for the motor is only hooked to this one. So let me slide under the console here. Actually, while I'm running this, this boat has this really cool channel right here. It's covered in a carpeted board. All my wiring goes down that channel. So I don't have to work underneath decks or anything. And it all pops out here. So how this system works is both front and rear batteries will come to this primary switch. Um... This switch controls the switch panel, so if I flick it to on, I have lights. Lights means things work. And then it runs a power. A lot of people ask how these little switch panels are wired up. Sorry, I'm underneath the console here. It has a hot that runs to my primary switch, and then it runs to every individual switch. And the only thing you really have to do is you have to run a hot, and then the ground for those switches and then whatever out is. So like the white wire here goes to my horn and then it has a ground that comes back to, I use a bus block, uh, I happen to have this laying around so I used it. It's a panel here with a bunch of screws and terminals. Sorry about the view, but it's the best I've got. Um, second one here is front and rear lights. So let me turn this guy on. So rear light just turned on, front lights were on. Uh, my second switch is uh, bilge pump. I don't know if you can hear it. Next will be live well. Don't know if you can hear it. Uh, this, the number five is the GPS, which I've turned the GPS on. And number six on my panel, um, let me get back out of here. Okay. So, I switched this switch out for a horn switch, so it's a momentary. It doesn't stay on, so that's on and off. That one will reset every time. And this last one here is the 
power tilt for the engine. So this is a, it's called a three-way rocker, three-way momentary rocker. So off is up and right. If I push up, the engine goes up. If I push down, the engine goes down. Works perfect. Uh, I've got some USB outlets. I've got a DC plug. Um, I'll probably never use the DC plug. Also, this switch panel specifically has a breakers. Um, there's no fuses on this boat except the GPS has an independent fuse. Uh, and how that works is these switches are set by amps. So these first two are three amp. I believe this is these two are five and these two are fifteen. Um, they don't really matter. They're not going to short out. Don't lose it. Um, and if I trip a breaker, it's literally just resetting the breaker. It's not um, pulling fuses and finding fuses. So that's a. Uh, pretty much it for the boat. Um, I've got some more rigging I still have to do. Uh, the seats aren't in, which there's one of the pedestals there. Uh, this one will be the passenger pedal pedestal, so it'll sit somewhere like this. And I'll have three of these uh, removable bases, one at the front and then one at the back towards the center, so I can move that seat around as I need to. The driver's seat is actually going to be that uh, bait well. Let me jump out here and I'll show it to you. So I'm real proud of how the bait, bait well came out when this boat came. I don't know if I opened it or not in the first video. I think it did. It's full of rust, um, which was kind of odd because aluminum doesn't rust. It actually wasn't the aluminum itself. It was the whatever the head kept putting in the aluminum stained the aluminum. So Ta-da! It is uh, painted to match the interior, and I reopened the overflow port, so I'll get about oh, four or five inches of water in here. So it makes it a bait well, not a live well. It'll hold four to five inches, not you know twelve inches or so. Um, the inside I scrubbed with a Scotch Brite and the aluminum Brite uh, pontoon cleaner that I used, and it actually turned out really, really, really well. I'm amazed at how much came off of it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the next update will probably be the finish of the rigging. I start to put uh, numbers on the boat and get the seats installed. A couple other little knick-knacky things. And then I'm pretty well done. Um, at this time, I'm not putting that hatch cover there for the rod holders. Um, I don't have enough carpet. So that was a mistake on my part. But I'll just leave it open because it's kind of a hassle anyway. So I will see you guys in the next video. Dun, 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 dun. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for the On the Water review. Um, sorry, it's been a couple weeks since the last update. Uh, I got the boat done, and we're on the water. I This is actually not its maiden voyage. This is its third trip out. The first was kind of a test run with a friend of mine that uh, found two old transducer holes in my transom that I forgot to fill, so I took on water to fix that problem. And then the second time, I had family in town, so I'm not going to videotape them there here. But uh, walkthrough is pretty well done. I, I've, I've learned a few things since I haven't out the last two times. One, check your transfer for extra holes. And two, uh, some comfort things that people like on bolts. So I've added the rod holders. On the other side, I do like to troll. Uh, my personal lake is very weedy at this time of year, so I have to wait until the grass dies out. Or do it at the beginning of the year, but I can still troll. Um, I can also vertical jig for walleye, and the rocking of the boat is enough to get them to strike. Um, so a couple of those are added. I wanted to add a, add a day box because I like to just kind of throw stuff down as I change rigs out. So these little trays, very nice, work very well. Um, trolling motor works fine. I got to do the rebuild on it still. The arrow here free spins, which it shouldn't. 
Let's see, let's turn around here. Everything's working as it should. Fuel tanks as it should. Added a couple vertical rod holders to get them up off the floor and people are here. Just so my gear doesn't get stepped on, people will get hooks in their things. So, um, runs great. The top speed dropped actually, and I'm not sure why. I lost a lot of weight in the boat when I pulled the water saturated foam out. And I think it gained some back by adding the second battery and having solid wood instead of uh, dissolved wood. So it really shouldn't affect it. I'm not not quite positive why. Um, at top speed, the boat lifts really hard to starboard, and it's because the battery let's sit down here in the back corner, plus my weight on this side. Uh, causes it to do that and actually it's doing it right now just sitting here so I do have a solution to fix that I plan on doing that in a separate video um, but all in all she's she's done minus some like I said tinkery things um, I'm going to fish a little bit now since I'm here and then I'm going to go home and fix this listing problem. So keep an eye out for those videos coming up. And thanks for watching. And I don't know what other videos I'm going to be posting. The babies do here in two weeks. So I've um, been discouraged from doing any more projects at this time. Because baby is going to need my attention. Um, yeah. So... Hope all is well and everybody else's builds. Every periodically I get an inspirational message, but we'll see what happens here. Thanks for watching.